Okay. Thank you very much for inviting me, first of all. So I'm going to share my screen. And, okay. Can you see the, the slides? Okay. So today I would like to speak how to design digital commons that uh, it happened exactly after what Diana, Diana explained very well. So they focus on collecting and generating open data. And in this case, we work with open data, turning them into something that is a disposal for the community, the, a broader community, as Diana explained it very well, not only the expert, but hopefully a broader audience of citizens and concerned citizens. But yes, first of all, let me introduce briefly. My name is Matteo. I'm a designer and founding partner of Sheldon Studio. We work on the intersection of data journalism, information design, and social design. And we used to say that we design informative experiences. Let me very briefly explain what we mean with it. So on one side, we have information that by definition, it's something that we read, we listen to in case of podcast or we watch. It's something that is indirect, it's produced by other people. On the other side, instead we have experience, which is direct because we live with our body through our senses. So our aim is to reduce the distance between information and experience. So designing project that in a way let the readers experience the information. This is what we mean. So exactly, the final aim obviously is to enable a broader audience also to understand that social and political issues are complex issues because things are more complex than they are advertised starting from, for instance, the climate change or nowadays the, the COVID vaccines. So everything is more complex. It's impossible to explain the complexity, especially with the website, but letting at least people perceive that things are complex, are not just black and white, will be in our uh, dream uh, would be our dream. Exactly. So what is designing digital common? First of all, I ask him if other 30 seconds of passion, I will introduce what is a common first of all. So the concept of, sorry, of commons originates in the 70th centuries in the UK uh, to refer to those field, fields shared by the landowners and the local communities. The letters have the right to use the lands, but also to take care of them. Nowadays, the commons are more alive than ever. If you think to the several Ubar gardens that populates our European cities, these are green areas given to the citizens, which through the practice of taking care of, of, of them, the so-called commoning, support the fostering of new relation on the district, increase the awareness on green issues and improve the air quality of the cities, for instance. Well, what are the digital commons? Are very common in reality. Wikipedia, OpenStreetMap, the Internet Archive, open software and open data are example of digital commons. Exactly as the traditional commons, they are at disposal by the citizenship. And at the same time, citizenship can or have to take care of them. But in which way? The digital commons care practices involve the maintenance of open data, forms of creative reuse, education about open data, and engaging, obviously, of a broader audience. As Diana said, designers obviously may have a crucial role in designing and taking care of digital commons, especially in case of open data. If you think of the growing amount of open data released by institution, open data is a strong potential that risk not to be fully released if the audience is not able to deal with it. Indeed, open data needs specific skills to be managed sometimes. Diana said sometimes open data are simpler than they are imagined, but in other cases uh, could, um, could turn in something pretty painful for non-expert users. So designers may have a role in this, as I say, designing interfaces or platforms that open to uh, open again or better open farterly the open data to an unexperienced audience and moreover, 
raise their graphicacy level toward the stronger awareness on specific phenomena and obviously on open data itself. Uh, graphicacy is the graphical literacy, so the, the skills to deal with is uh, graphical statistics, so charts and information when it turn into something visual. And yes, at Sheldon, we explore every day how to turn open data into digital common. To show that, I brought two cases um, just to show the approach we relied on. Each of the projects I am going to show you will need a single tool to be explained. So now I'm obviously moving forward and in case there's uh, space later for questions. The first project is called Local Climate Change. This is the URL. And we made visible the European Copernicus data set. That is a big data set uh, because it's based on tons of daily temp temperatures of the whole European territory, starting from the 1961. You can imagine the amount of data, more than 100,000 cities temperature every day for 40 years. In a small peak, you can see one of the traditional data bits about climate clustered data with colored regions that obviously indicate something, but it's very different, for instance, from this kind of visualization. We uh, relied on this data set granularity to foster a stronger connection between citizen and their data, because in the end, it's data about you, about the city you live, the city or where you spent your holidays or where you studied. So we try to connect uh, readers with their places, especially the one they care. So for this reason, we designed a scattered uh, dot map that features more than 100 dots, one for each European municipality. Obviously the color uh, relates to the uh, increase of temperature in the last 40 years. And then, uh, okay, this is a screencast from the, the project. Visitors can explore the map and found their places they care. And once the visitor spotted a place, a new page opens. Okay, now let's wait. I'm searching for Zermatt. Then a new page opens and it is based on a data scroll detailing approach where the scrolls activity supports readers in focusing on the chart and what the chart says. For instance, in this case, the chart now is stuck in the center of the screen and through scrolling, readers can understand better what the chart says. Then the narration zoom a little bit out and tell the, tells the story from the specific place to the surroundings, the province, and then the regions. Finally, we, we thought it would be good giving chance to those concerned readers to share the data and the climate that affects their places. So we generated 100,000 data thumbnails, so this rectangle in red, ready to be shared on social networks. Then it was impossible to monitor all the spread of these thumbnail on Facebook due to the API privacy restriction that the social network made. But we observed that many people share it among their groups like district group, or major of small towns, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, with the idea to raise awareness among their digital social bubbles. Then the second case is called Mapping Diversity. We published a few weeks ago and it's still in progress. Through this project, we continue to explore the same approach you've seen before, but apply to another topic, the diversity in the Italian city street names. As I said, the project is just a pilot of a longer process where we plan to collect more kind of diversity and gaps which occur in our city street names, such as the racial, the, the social, the political gap. In this case, the first chapter is about the gender. Unfortunately, in Italy, not all the cities have open data about street names. For this reason, uh, we, in partnership with the European Data Journalism Network, uh, work on an algorithm that connects the open street maps, open data with the Wikipedia data to extract a pretty accurate data set on street names. Then 
uh, again, the project relies on a data scrolling telling narration to enable a broader audience to understand the issue, first of all, but also the visualization. And this is the, the main page. Let me start it. Okay. Which introduced the whole topic. And then, <coughs> so sorry, after the first introduction, in this case, is a simple chart that it's again stuck in the screen. And as soon as the reader scroll, a series of texts are explaining what the chart is displaying. So before there was all the street uh, dedicated to people, then the first selection was the one dedicated only to women, and then only to women that are not saints, because in Italy we have a big tradition of saints like Maria, many streets are dedicated to Maria. And so the data about women are still less if you exclude this kind of people. Then this is the, the again the introduction where every chart is in a way in, in a way explained and this is the full the whole list of the people um, where the where Italian streets are dedicated in red the, the women we were um, inspired by the veteran memorial in Washington so with this big, huge visualization of names and finally the most interesting part for today where basically we relied on the same idea, a simple map which step-by-step step reveals and visualizes the female screen names. So in the beginning, these are the, the streets of Bolzano that are dedicated to people. Then the first it's the, the, um, dedicated to men, then to women, just 26. Again, women that are not saints. And finally, uh, we use this, we try to exploit the same approach. So suggesting to share the, the data about the city with this informative thumbnail. And finally, readers are free to explore and to read about the story of who are or were those women. Then the last project, it's very different. It's about the open data portal we designed for Matera that was the European capital of culture, culture in 2019. Matera is an Italian city in the deep south of Italy. Uh, after one year of being European capital of culture, the city of Matera Foundation asked us to make sense of all the data they collected and generating during that year. And they asked it, as to design an open data portal. So we thought to move a little bit beyond, I mean, beyond traditional open data, this one is the European open data portal that are mainly functional and devoted to experts. Basically is a long list of data sets sorted by categories. With the aim to give back data to the people, uh, this was the main idea we had. So many of the data indeed was about what people listen, consume, visited, enjoyed during the Matera year. So we would like to give him back data to the people that contributed in the same data generation and also obviously to the international community. So we relied on a lot of interview the foundation did during that year. So the classical qualitative data and identify three kinds of potential users for, for, for our open data portal. And now I share a very fast uh, view of the whole platform. And then I just go um, in deep in a single section. Okay. Instead, that just a list of data set, we design a seven thematic section that show what Matera open data can do, suggesting ideas for possible creative reuse and then leading only in the end of the reading process to the open data. Uh, with the idea to offer several entry points to each audience category. So the citizen, the data lover, and the nerd, the data expert. Um, because we thought the open data are just the last part of a wider process that aim to, again, empower citizens, especially the ones that are non-expert. For instance, this is a screencast from the, the section about cultural open data. 
Okay, it's moving, yes. The page narrate and visualize the data and only in the end is closed by an open data corner that you will see at the end. And this open data corner just share the data the readers watched in this page. And especially the data are already cleaned and filtered, um, ready to be visualized. We created this section, especially for non-expert. Obviously it's people that has a concern that would like to, to start, it's not the, the average citizen, but with this data set are very small, very easy, just drag and drop, for instance, in one of the many platform that visualize data and the, the charts are ready. This is the closing section. And then obviously we relied on very simple data visualization that were that are visually accessible to a broader audience. For instance, this is a very super simple stacked bar. Now it's just a screenshot, but if you visit the platform is interactive. So it allows also to read the, the small section because it's enlarged or we try to better integrate data vids and the, the story, the text, like especially in this case, without integrating the legend in the text, relying on the idea that average visitors are attracted probably by the color and the shapes. So once they want to discover what the blue or the pink uh, relates to, they realize that they, um, they, the legend is in the text. So in a way they are not forced, but motivated to read a little bit of context. And finally, there's a specific section that is called Open Data Center this time, that is devoted for the data lover and the data expert and, and contains all the data set, which is very similar to a traditional open data portal. So to wrap up, uh, I show you what we try to do so that we try to open the open data to a broader audience, turning them into a real digital commons. With the idea to foster a stronger awareness of specific topics and also on open data issues as well. How we try to do that? We connect local and global to shorten the distance between citizens and their data. We rely on interdisciplinary and collaborative approach, which provides many and different entry points to the same phenomenon. And also this allowed to speak to different audiences through the same design project, returning as many facets as possible of the same story. Uh, I didn't explain so much this, uh, this issue, but we love to combine quantitative and qualitative data, whereas possible, especially on social issues, because we are in, in the end talking about people that yes, it's number, but behind number there, is, there are people. And then we try to design toward empowering readers graphicacy and to enable a broader audience to approach contemporary society's complexity. And finally, we uh, struggle and to reflect on the political and social implication that our design project features. It's always a mess because you, you, you expect that you reflected on everything and then <laughs> She happens every time, but at least being aware that there are social and political implications in design, it's very important because in the end, we try to make internet a better place. So just to, as a take home message, I love this statement from Clay Johnson. Uh, he, he wrote a book about information diet and I found very nice. So the internet is the single biggest creator of ignorance mankind has ever created as well as the single biggest eliminator of that ignorance. So it's up to us populating internet with, with good contents. So thank you. And now the stage is for Matthias.